For the second time in three days, Ohio soccer is home here at Chessa Field, and this time the Ball State Cardinals come into town as it's the 4-5-1 Ohio Bobcats against the 5-3-1 Ball State Cardinals here on a Sunday afternoon in Athens. Gabe Genovese here with you alongside Noah Wolf. Ohio, by the way, 2-1 in the Mid-American Conference to start conference play, and Ball State one and two. We should have a good one on our hands this afternoon here in Athens, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Ball State has kind of underperformed so far in conference play, taking a tough three to nothing loss at home against Bowling Green and then traveling to Kent State, losing a one nothing heartbreaker there. They, that goal came in the last 10 minutes of that contest. Ball State was in it for most of the game, just couldn't pull it out. And this isn't really what we've expected from Craig Roberts. He's lost just as many games, or nearly as many games this season as he has the past three in Mid-American Conference play. You said it, Craig Robertson, Ball State, 27-3-3 three and three in, in the Mid-American Conference over the last three seasons. They're one and two in conference play to start 2018. Meanwhile, Ohio, after a tough one nothing loss and double overtime to Central Michigan to start the Mid-American Conference season, two straight victories for the Bobcats. Yeah, it was a good one that we witnessed on Friday here at Chesapeake Field, Gabe. They were definitely winning more of the chances, getting, getting better looks at goal than Miami. I feel like it was a little bit more lopsided in favor of Ohio than that one nothing scoreline indicates, but all that it matters is they got that one goal on the board and their defense held strong and they were able to beat the, their rivals in the Battle of the Bricks. We're about set for kickoff here at Chesterfield. Let's give you the starting lineups for both teams this afternoon. We'll start with the road team, Ball State Cardinals. Tristan Studeville is in goal for Ball State. The 5'6 senior from Kansas City has started all nine games for the Cardinals. She's allowed eight goals in those nine games. Lauren Roll, a 5'4 senior midfielder out there for Ball State as well. Emily Simmons, Allison Abbey, and Taylor Pooley, the next three. Simmons and Abbey in the midfield for Ball State. Pooley, a defender for the Cardinals. Peyton Cook, the 5'8 junior, also starts for Ball State as we're underway here at Chesapeake. And right away, Aaron Burkett touches the ball for the first time today in net for Ohio. Let's finish out this Ball State lineup now. Sammy Corcoran, one of the freshmen for these Cardinals, starts in the midfield. Julia Elbo, second on this team in goals for Ball State with two through the first nine games. The 5'6 junior gets the start once again. Alessandra Fistrovich, the 5'3 senior, making just her third start this afternoon here at Chesapeake. And Yela Ziswiler and Grace Alsop, both defenders, routed out for the Cardinals. From what we're seeing so far, Gabe, it looks like Ball State's employing really a back three of Allstop, Pooley, and Simmons to start things off. They have five defenders, but it looks like Corcoran and Ziswiler are working more as wingbacks. Let's give you the Ohio starting lineup just under a minute into this game. No score between Ball State and Ohio. Olivia Sensky, the 5'10 freshman, starts for, for Ohio in the back, making her ninth start of the season. And then senior day here at Chessa Field. So all eight seniors getting a start for the Bobcats today against Ball State. Macy Hugelin, the 5'6 senior. Mandy Arnzen, the 5'6 senior defender. And Rihanna Reese, the 5'4 senior defender as well. Reese and Arnzen have started every game for Ohio. Macy Hugelin getting her first start of the season. Madeline Kay, the 5'9 senior as well. She started every game for the Bobcats. Two goals and an assist for Kay thus far this season. Her five points is third most on this Ohio team. Bryce Huber, the 5'10 redshirt senior, making her fourth start of the year. Victoria Breeden, not a senior, the 5'7 junior, making her fourth start. She has two assists this season. That's second on this Ohio team. Abby Townsend, the 5'6 freshman, and all she does is score four goals for the Bobcats this, this season. That leads Ohio. And then to round it out, Maria Kalika, the 5'6 graduate student. She plays defense as well, making her 10th start of the year. She started every game but one for Ohio. And then Michelle Rocky, another graduate student for these Bobcats, a transfer from Oregon, gets the start. And then we already mentioned her, but Aaron Burkett, the senior for Ohio, gets the start in net. Out swinging ball into the box. Ohio now regroups. Mandy Arns and plays outside. Just over two minutes into this game, no score between Ohio and Ball State. You mentioned Abby Townsend when going through the lineup, Gabe, and how all she does is score. 
added another goal to Itali, had the game winner against Miami, the only goal in that game. It was a beautiful assist from Olivia Molesky, who starts on the bench today for the Cats. But these two teams have two of the most talented freshmen in the entire conference. Abby Townsend for the Bobcats, and then Tatiana Mason for the Cardinals, who doesn't start, but she has three goals and an assist in her nine games this season. And Mason normally, surprisingly, comes off the bench. Nine games, only four starts for the freshmen, so make it ten games with this one this afternoon. Only four starts for Mason, but you said it, three goals, and the 5'6 freshman from Ann Arbor, Michigan, leads Ball State in the scoring column. Brianna Reese with the touch outside. She switches fields to Mandy Arnzen. And Arnzen has just been immense on that back line all season long for the Cats as she offside. sets the offside trap there, helping with that organized back line. Looks to be her, Rocky, and Reese that are staying back while Kalika, Breeden, and Sensky have the freedom to move forward out of the defenders. But Arnzen has definitely been the most consistent center back presence there, making very timely challenges and just keeping the defensive line organized for Ohio. Peyton Cook was just offside for Ball State. The junior has one goal this season for the Cardinals. These two teams battling early for position in the Mid-American Conference. Ohio fifth place in the MAC right now at two and one with their six points. Ball State, Seventh place, one and two, of course. Top eight at the end of the year, making the Mid-American Conference Tournament. Still very early here in conference play. That ball goes out for an Ohio throw. It was Grace Alsop trying to chase it down for Ball State. She actually gave Ohio a little bit better throwing position in Ball State's half of the field. Ohio slightly overperforming in terms of where they were expected to finish in the MAC. Obviously, like you said, Gabe, it's very early in conference play, but sitting fifth right now, and, and they're looking pretty good when, when we've seen them play. They, they look organized, they look efficient. Huber's well, cross deflected, cross the touch line. It'll be a corner kick for Ohio. And this is something that Ohio has, has struggled early in the season. 37 corners for the Bobcats through their first 10 games, 66 for their opponents. Abby Townsend to the angle for the corner kick. Townsend, the freshman, will take the corner for Ohio. Out swinging ball near the six. And that ball. They're going to call an infraction, Gabe. Don't know exactly what the contact was or who made the violation, but. Maria Kalika got a touch for Ohio near the six. But you said it in fraction called, and Tristan Studeville will boot this ball away. Just over six minutes into the game. No score between Ohio and Ball State. And now through ball from Julia Elbo, intended for Allison Abbey, but way too long. Burkett easily picks it up and rolls it out. Just to continue what I was saying earlier, Gabe, before that corner kick, Ohio outperforming their expectations right now, and I think that's something that could continue as this season moves along. Their tougher tests are near the end, Western Michigan, namely, and Bowling Green, both of those games taking place in late October. Peyton Cook gets a shot on goal. Burkett able to poke it out. It'll be a corner for Ball State. A little bit of a tricky play for Burkett there. It took a short hop right in front of her. And that kind of came out of nothing, Gabe. It was a lot of... Passes in midfield, and all of a sudden, shot by Ball State. Luckily, Burkett was able to have that awareness and not be phased by the quick shot. Gray Southsop will take the corner for the Cardinals. Ball, middle of the six, back post, and past everyone. And I believe we'll get another infraction called as Burkett went to the ground. She was very lucky there. She didn't look like she was in the best position to get the ball. She thought she could punch it early on, but just completely whiffed, and maybe that was because of an inf infraction. And now I believe they're just going to call it a goal kick. But yeah, she misjudged the ball and left it free to be touched on that back post. Ball State had bodies in the area. 
but they just couldn't tap at home. Burkett making just her fourth start in goal for Ohio this season. Sydney Mallon, the sophomore, has gotten most of the action for the Bobcats. Burkett in three starts allowed seven goals, made 15 saves. And Ohio was losers in all three of those contests. Burkett, the senior, getting the start today as Arnzen deflects one off of Allison Abbey for a throw in. Ball State has been really good about giving pressure to Ohio's back line early on. They are running, making every challenge, even if they don't think that they can win it, just to, like I said, put pressure on Ohio's defenders. I wonder how long they can keep this up without running themselves out of energy. But at this point, it's definitely throwing Ohio for a loop. That Ohio back line has been pretty solid all year long for Aaron Rodgers, especially Arnzen and Reese, the seniors back there, along with Michelle Rocky, the transfer for Morgan, graduate student. When you have a, a veteran back line like that, it'll, it'll always help out. A coach has got to feel pretty good about that. Nine minutes in, no score between Ball State and Ohio. The back line of the team, though, is really that foundation. And when you have one as solid as Ohio's, that allows your forwards to not have to track back as much, to stay in their attacking positions, knowing that they have a solid back line that can keep them out of trouble. Here's Arnzen with the ball on our feet now, plays Huber. Now Arnzen gets it taken away by Abby. Allison Abby down the left sideline. Ball inside the 18, no one there. Rihanna Reese controls, far side now for Ohio. You don't normally see Arnzen take on a defender like she did that, that first time when she lost it to Abby. Arnzen normally pretty good about getting rid of the ball early on, but like I said, Ball State has been consistent with that pressure. And She's not used to having to face a two-on-one situation like she did there out of the back line. Abby once again taking on Breeden. Shot deflected. Burkett able to grab it before Seven it gathered. crosses the touch line. By Burkett. Good defense by Breeden. Yeah, she was very solid in that game against Miami. Besides Arnzen, I feel like Breeden was the best defensive presence in Abby. that one nothing win. Obviously, every player was doing their part on defense for the Bobcats in that shutout. But Breeden was a name I was saying a lot in terms of the challenges that she was making. Townsend makes her first run of the ball game, gets it taken away. Offside to call. And now offside called on Ball State. And Peyton Cook arguing that she wasn't even across midfield. Either way, Ohio gets the free kick and immediately boots it into the far corner. Macy Huglin wins it for Ohio, and now ball off of Ball State. It'll be an Ohio throw. Good pressure by Huglin there. She didn't have the chance to win the ball the first time, but she kept that pressure up, made a good challenge. And now it'll be off of Ohio for a goal kick. Ohio two and one in Mid-American Conference play. They've never started three and one under head coach Aaron Rodgers in his sixth year with Ohio. Ohio 34, 61 and 10 under Aaron Rodgers. That's a 324 winning percentage. 21, 38 and five in the MAC. It's a 328 winning percentage. Ohio did start strong in MAC play last season. Started 4-2-1 in conference play before ending the regular season 0-3-1. As Townsend makes a run down the far side, and just too far of a touch, it'll be out for a goal kick. If you think about it, Gabe, this might be the perfect well, the formula the for a good defense. Aaron Rodgers season. He has solid seniors. Eight of them are starting today, and two of them have started every single game on that back line. We talked about it earlier, Arnzen and Reese. So, Ohio... 
has the foundation there, and then they've also had some good performances from their youth. Eaglin takes the corner. Townsend goes up, can't get ahead on it. Ball back outside the 18. And now Ball State will try to counter. Peyton Cook just falls. Victoria Breeden takes it away from her. Boots it away. Throw in Ball State. Kind of an organized chaos way of defending for Ohio there. Not much you can do when you send that many numbers forward on the corner kick. And it was good by Breeden to get back. She got a little bit lucky Ball State in with the fall from Peyton Cook. And now Peyton Cook falls into Breeden here, committing the foul. So Breeden getting lucky a couple times. But ultimately, Ohio is... Pretty good about knowing when to get back, knowing who is there, and having that cover even on a counterattack situation when Ball State was looking dangerous. Sensky takes the kick. That one near the 18, quickly booted out. Now Rihanna Reese gets ahead on it, far side. Towns in there, plays back to Reese. Just over 14 minutes into the first half, still no score. Now Sensky battling with Julia Elvbo of Ball State. Ohio's controlled most of the possession here in the first 15 minutes. But they've controlled it kind of in the middle third of the pitch, Gabriel, and it's not easy for them to go forward and get the chances. I think you're right in that Ohio has had most of the ball control. They just haven't had the ball control in the right area of the field. They haven't been in that attacking third. They've just been consistently winning the ball in their back third or controlling it in midfield. We haven't seen them with any sort of danger yet so far today. One shot on goal for Ball State, none for Ohio. Two corner kicks for the Bobcats, one for the Cardinals. Haven't seen a substitution yet in this match. Huber wins it away. Huber in swinging ball near the six. Out across the touchline for a goal kick. Abby Townsend was the only one in the 18 for Ohio. Yeah, it would have been a tough ball for Townsend to find even if it were placed in play. Townsend up against two or three Ball State defenders on her own. Good idea from Huber and, and a good job from her to win the ball. Ohio just didn't have the numbers forward. They started six defenders, as I mentioned earlier on, Gabe. They did the same thing. In fact, they started the same six defenders against Miami this Friday. So obviously, Ohio trying to concentrate on not giving up goals rather than scoring goals. Cook trying to get on the end of this one for Ball State. Rocky wins it away. Reese trying to clear, it ends up at the foot of Elbow near the top of the 18. Ohio able to clear for a second. Huber with the ball on her foot, plays K. K far side for Townsend. Townsend finds Hugelin. Hugelin loses it. Townsend gets it back, shot blocked, redirected out toward Reese. State comes away with it. Elbow looking far side. Still no score. 17 minutes in. Now ball middle of the 18. Breeden gets a touch. Now Arns and clears. Looked like Fistrovich had found a pocket of space where she could thrive, but she just slipped right at the end. That allowed the Ohio back line to figure it out. Substitution for Ball State. They've just been a little bit lucky so yeah, far, Ohio. The, the, the back line normally doesn't have to rely on luck too much, but Ball State has been consistently pressing forward, and it's it's been a nuisance for the Bobcats. I think that was part of Craig Roberts's game plan today. You lose two straight. 
Ball State hasn't scored in nearly 10 days. They've been shut out twice in a row. The 1-0 loss at Kent State, the 3-0 loss against Bowling Green. Ball State just two shots total against Kent State, none on goal. Very uncharacteristic of a Craig Roberts team. Yeah, already outperforming that today. We're not even through 20 minutes of this game. And now Breeden called for the infraction. Little shove in the back of Abby. Free kick for Ball State. Craig Roberts, 90, 56, and 26 at the helm. 49, 30, and 12 in the Mid-American Conference. And his Ball State team has been dominant in the MAC the last three seasons. Ball swung in. And inside the six, Burkett takes it on a hop. No damage done on the free kick. Nice. Ball State the last three seasons. 27, three, and three in the MAC. Three straight MAC West regular season titles. Of course, here in 2018, the MAC has gone to no divisions, no East, no West, just a straight 12 team standing, 12 team league. But three straight MAC West titles for Craig Roberts, regular season titles the past three years. They have not won the tournament, however. No trips to the NCAA tournament. As Huber sends a shot just Huber wide, just wide from point. about 30, 35 yards out, the right foot of Huber. Still no score, just under 20 minutes in. Sam Campbell coming into the game for Ball State. In substitution for uh, Campbell Cook. comes in for Cook for Ball State. Yeah, if you thought that Ball State was attacking too much before, Gabe, they're certainly going to be trying it now. Sam Campbell listed as a forward on the roster, taking off Peyton Cook, a natural midfielder. Campbell, a goal and an assist through the first nine games this season for Ball State. And now the keeper, Studeville, going to come up and take this kick from midfield. Yeah, you can really tell that Ball State has been working on their offensive tactics here, and that, that is their main game plan today. Ball tapped near the top of the 18, headed out. K gets a touch now for Ohio, and she beats everyone there. Huber with it now for the Bobcats. Couldn't capitalize on Studeville being out of position, not enough bodies forward for Ohio, but at least they were able to defend that free kick without any trouble. Just couldn't quite get the counterattack moving. Breen throws it in. And now Huber. Uh, Huber thought she knocked it out. It'll go Ohio's way. They'll say off of Abby. They'll go to Huber once again near side. Huber gets it taken away. Abby wins it now for Ball State. Quickly up the pitch to Campbell. Nice little one-two back to Abby. Abby now finds Elbow. A lot of numbers forward for Ball State. The way that their formation is right now, they're basically playing a front four. You don't see that very often, Gabe. Back four all the time. And Midfield Elf four often, outside, but Nicole. a front four, that, that's crazy. And Elbow is just offside. Twenty-three minutes to play, first half. Ball State and Ohio scoreless. Crowd starting to get into it a little bit here at Chesapeake. Senior day here for Ohio. Ohio trying to start three and one in the MAC for the first time under head coach Aaron Rodgers in his sixth season with Ohio. Now Arnzen clears for the Bobcats as Campbell was in pursuit. Abby quickly swings the ball in far post, just out of reach of everyone for Ball State. Jenna Dombrowski was the closest one there, closest one to it. 
Ball takes a weird hop away from Kay. I'll tell you what, Allison Abbey is all over the left side of the pitch for Ball State. Yeah, and she's been sending in some really good balls like the one there. Arnzen gets ahead, still in the middle of the 18. Shot blocked and out of bounds for a corner. Sam Campbell thought she had a goal off the bench. And Ball State earns their third corner of the match. Yeah, thank goodness Michelle Rocky was there to make that point blank block. Would have been very difficult for Burkett to get to that one. Hard shot by Campbell, like you mentioned, Gabe. Ball State's looking ever dangerous. In swinging ball in the six, headed out by Huber. Comes back out top of the 18, shot blocked once again. Fistrovich with the shot. Ohio can't quite counter. Ball flicked into the 18, Burkett comes out and picks it up once again. Yeah, this would maybe be an opportunity for Ohio to try that counter attack. They don't have a ton of numbers forward, but Ball State also not too many people back. Green tries to find Townsend, nothing there. Now Campbell gets it taken away by Rocky. Rocky megs one and then ball gets booted out for an Ohio throw. Olivia Molesky in for Ohio. Uh, Olivia, for Olivia Molesky will check in the game for Bryce Quinn Huber for Ohio. And for Ball State. Well, we've got a line change here for Ball yeah. State. Five in, five out. Amanda Shaw into the game, along with Kerrigan Johnson. Paula Guerrero also in. Candy Metzger. Paula Guerrero, one of those subs for Ball State. She leads this Cardinals team with three assists. Also one goal. Her five points is second on the team. 20 minutes to play, first half. No score between Ball State and Ohio. And the much anticipated arrival of Tatiana Mason, the points leader and the goals leader for Ball State. Three goals assist and excuse me, three goals and an assist in her freshman season so far. Seven points for Ball State. And that one trickles out for a Ball State corner. Corner kick is set up for Ball State. Mason just has a nose for the goal, leads this team with ten shots on goal as well. And just fourteen shots, so she puts it on net. She's hovering toward that back post right now. Not the tallest one on the team, so she might not be able to get it done with her head, but she's a dangerous presence no matter what. Corcoran with the shot deflected wide and out for another Ball State corner. Man, those shots that take a deflection are, have to be the scariest thing for the goalkeeper, Burkett. You just never know which way it's gonna bounce. She seemed to be positioned well for that one, and she was lucky that it went wide of goal rather than looping in toward the post. Ball sent in, middle of the six. Knocked out once again. Ohio doing a decent job at defending these corners. Now four corners in the first half for Ball State. Reese clears for Ohio. Only so far, though, Ball State continuing with that attacking presence. Lucky, though, that that cross was sent wide and out of play. And the threat should end. Sydney Lecky, Courtney Dagardas in the game for Ohio. For Maddie Kay. Twenty-seven minutes in, eighteen minutes to play, first half. No score between Ohio and Ball State. Dagardas gets her first touch of the game, finds Molesky. Molesky tries to send a through ball to Abby Townsend. A ball cut off, and now Arnzen quickly gets it back upfield for Ohio. Ball State with the counterattack. Campbell in, and Burkett comes out and cuts it off. That's the best play Aaron Burkett's made all afternoon. We're still scoreless. Yeah, and the most important one, too. If she didn't 
make that at that exact time, that's definitely a Ball State goal. She had the awareness, she had her instincts to come out, come to the top of the penalty area, and she did it without causing a penalty, got all ball, was able to collect. It's one of the toughest plays for a goalkeeper to make, and she made it with ease. Her experience as a senior really showing there. Victoria Breeden to the feet of Townsend. Townsend plays outside Molesky, and that ball cut off. Ball near the top of the 18. Sydney Lecky stumbles. Ball State clears. Now, Rihanna Reese comes up, wins the challenge. Lecky with the ball on her feet finds Molesky. And now Molesky shoved down from behind, and Ohio will have a free kick in the most dangerous position they've been in all, all, all afternoon. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Gabe. This will be an interesting free kick. Looks like Kalika and Townsend both asking for it. Ball State with a three-person wall, getting their last-second adjustments in on that. Ohio only with three people at the top of the penalty area. Shot way high from Townsend. Townsend the attempt. Call the post across the hook line. It'll be a goal, goal kick. kick. Ball State. Ball State. Interesting State though season. that gave or excuse me that Ball State didn't have to do that much defending there. Ohio only pushing three bodies into the penalty area. You would expect the Bobcats to have those numbers forward and play a pass there, get into that good position. But they decided to go with the shot from Townsend instead. Somehow Doggart has called for a foul on that one. Too much contact. And now Ball State driving forward. Ball headed out by Rocky. But Reese can't get there. It's Paula Guerrero who beats her. Ball set far post and way out. Goal kick, Ohio. Shot is near the ice cream truck over the touch line. Goal kick, Ohio. Ohio hasn't scored much in the first half this season. Just three goals in the opening 45 minutes of play for Ohio all year. Opponents have outscored Ohio 7-3 in the first half. Still scoreless here this afternoon. Kennedy Metzger sends a ball in near the 18. It's a Ball State goal. 1-0 Cardinals. Just under 15 minutes to play. First half, and guess who it was? Tatiana Mason, her fourth of the season. It leads Ball State. And the Cardinals strike first. Yeah, no surprise there, Tatiana Gabe. Mason with the goal. Tatiana Mason has been incredible this season off the bench for Ball State. Her fourth goal, like you said, she found a lot of space in that penalty area on a good break for Ball State. She didn't even touch it and control it. She just first touched, tapped it past Burkett and into the back of the net. It was a fast, low cross that bounced up on Mason. But the freshman from Ann Arbor read the bounce perfectly and just tapped it in with her right foot. Mason's fourth goal, but she's only had one shot in her last three games. So she finally finds space. Now Molesky tries to send it through to Leckie, nothing doing. It'll be a Ball State throw. Kennedy Metzger had the cross. That's her first assist of the year. Ohio certainly looking threatening here. And Gabe, they say you're at your most vulnerable when you've just scored. Ohio trying to make that true in terms of Ball State. Deary gets ahead on it. Molesky battling. Now wins it. Left-footed shot straight Molesky at the keeper, Stud Studeville. Studeville. That's the first the shot. shot on goal for Ohio this afternoon. Still one nothing. Ball State. 13 minutes to play first half. Oh, 
Metzger sends it forward. Pass to Arnzen. Mason there. She gets knocked down. No call. Burkett picks it up. She'll boot it away. Now, it looked like there was a lot of contact on the edge of the pen penalty area, but no appeals for a call from either side. So apparently the players themselves thought it was cl clean, as did the head referee. Leski bodied off the ball. Ball State continuing to have good control in their defending third. That's been the rough patch for Ohio, is that they've had most of the control in this game from what it seems like but they're only able to control in the middle third or their defending third of the pitch. When they do send the ball into the attacking area, they just can't control it. That Ball State defense is really organized and very hard to crack. Ball State pushing forward once again. Rocky there for Ohio, sends it out for a throw. Again, Ohio has now been outscored 8-3 in the first half of matches this season. That one trickles out for a goal kick. Goal kick Ohio. In the second half, Ohio has outscored opponents 7-6. Just been slow starts for Aaron Rodgers' group. There must be some very powerful halftime conversations going on. Reese flicks it on for Leckie. Now Molesky's pass is deflected. Breeden wins it away from Mason. Now tries to find Dagerdas. Good play by Kerrigan Johnson in the back for Ball State. Now Mason forward down the left sideline. And Mason cut off by Breeden, and she drags Breeden okay, down. Attraction. It'll be an Ohio free kick. Heck of a play by Victoria Breeden. Yeah, she's been really good about defending Mason so far, save for that first goal that Mason scored. But it's been one versus the other on that left wing for Ball State. And Breeden will make her way up now, thankfully. I think it was more of an adjustment with her shoe or her shin guard than anything, Gabe. Thankfully, not an injury. 9.51 to play first half. Ball State leads 1-0. Dagardas didn't know where it was. Ball State comes away with it. Mason plays back for Johnson. Now they're going to call Paula Guerrero for an infraction near midfield. Good job by Olivia Sensky to shield her off. Arnzen will take the kick for the Bobcats. Intended for Molesky, flicked on, Lecky there. She gets a touch, Studeville out of her box. And now Deary loses it, sent out for an Ohio throw. That was perhaps the most promising Ohio possession we've seen so far. Morgan Collick into the game. With the ball Oregon flicked on by a Ball State defender. That's a mistake that we haven't seen them make very often. In fact, we haven't seen really any def mistakes from that back line of Ball State, save for that missed header that allowed Leckie to come through past the back line and have control. And if they could have caught Studeville out of position, we'd be seeing a different ball game here, Gabe. Molesky a bad touch toward the middle. 
Ball sent straight to Studeville. Morgan Kalika is checked in this game for Ohio. The sister of Maria Kalika. Morgan, just a freshman, has played in all 10 games for Ohio this season. Started in three of them. Has one assist this season. Now Dierig plays outside. Dagerdas. Sensky had the ball go right under her foot. Dagerdas now plays Olivia Sensky. Little one-two. Ball on the 18. Molesky heads wide. She was all alone. And offside was called anyways. Offside the call. Just over seven minutes to play in the first half. Ohio still down one. Yeah, it's kind of easy to be all alone when you are offside. Past the back line when the ball is played. And uh, makes it pretty hard for defenders to defend. Unfortunately for Molesky, though, she just couldn't get that header quite strong enough, nor quite on goal, even if she were on side. I was thinking she might want to control it as she was a little bit deeper in that 18-yard box than a header might be able to be effective. So if she were able to control that one, bring it down, and then send a shot with her foot, might have had more luck. Of course, the point is moot anyway because she was offside. Brayton boots it, Molesky there down the near side. Ball intended for Deerig. And booted out for another Ohio throw. Taylor Pooley was there to boot that ball out. 5'9", senior defender, started every game for Ball State. And that time she just chips it out of bounds once again. Ohio starting to play a little bit more in Ball State's half of the pitch. Just over five minutes to play first half, still down one. Santa Catarina gets ahead, now Dagerdas. Breeden with it for Ohio, deflected off of Amanda Shaw for an Ohio throw. Braden boots it toward Deary. Deary gets a touch, now plays back for Santa Catarina. Lecky, Lecky battling for it far side. Now Ball State clears. Amanda Shaw wins it away from Serena Dierig. Now Shaw boots it upfield with her right foot. Sensky loses it. Ball State attacks. Tatiana Mason near side, just outside the 18. And Mason gets that ball deflected out by Breeden for a corner. Breeden on the defensive clear. It's over the touchline. It will be a corner kick. Mason has just looked so dangerous so far this game. Obviously, she had her first goal after maybe two or three touches from her coming off the bench. And since then, she's looked similarly dangerous down that left wing. She's all over the place, making good crosses, challenging the Ohio defensive line, making it really tough for the Cats. In swinging ball, inside the six, headed out. And now Dagerdas gets ahead on it. Deerig there, plays Lecky. And now Lecky gets it poked out of bounds by Taylor Pooley. Yeah, Lecky will jog all the way back across the field. She's been playing on the left side for Ohio. 
Found herself on the right side there. Mason's pass, intercepted by Michelle Rocky. Quickly back to Ball State. 2.35 to play first half. Ball State one, Ohio none. Dagradas pokes it down the near sideline. Pooley there for Ball State. She'll play back to Studeville. Sensky controls with a little bit of time. Two Plays minutes. Lecky. Lecky on a hop. Chips the keeper. Will it bounce in? It'll go just over the bar. Sydney Lecky can't Sydney get Ohio Lecky on the down. board. She wasn't offside. Studeville came out. And with just under two minutes to play first half, Ball State clings to a 1-0 lead. And Studeville having a word with the side judge, claiming Lecky was offside. Gabe, I don't think she was. When the ball was played, she was on the right side of that back line and then ended up crossing them over, finding the ball. I think that back line was just out of position and disorganized. They didn't know that Lecky was on the far side, they, and they were not marking her. That was definitely the best chance Ohio's had all game. Lucky was smart to take that chip first time, and just unlucky that it bounced over the crossbar. Lucky near midfield. Pokes that one down the far side. For Kalika. Santa Catarina now for Ohio. 35 seconds to play first half. Lecky sets up shop. Cross deflected and it'll trickle near the goal line. Studeville able to save it. And it'll be an Ohio throw. Clock ticking 20 seconds to play first half. Lucky battling for it, finds Deerig. Deerig sends one in, deflected. 12 seconds. Ten, Ball State clears nine, now. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And that'll be the half. Two, one, zero. Clock hits zero. Ball State, Ball State one, one, Ohio one, nil. nil. End of the first half here at Chesapeake Field. Gary, you watching close it's a goal from Tatiana Mason that gets Ball State on the board. We'll see if Ohio can come back in the second half. They've outscored opponents 7-6 in the second half this year. They'll have to do it again here at Chessa on a Sunday afternoon in Athens. We'll be right back on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Back here for the second half at Chesa Field. Ball State one, Ohio nil, just under a minute until we get going again here in Athens. And it's a goal from the freshman, Tatiana Mason, that has Ball State on the board. Mason's fourth goal of the season. The freshman has been outstanding for the Cardinals. She now leads Ball State in goals with four points with nine. And she hadn't registered, she'd only registered one shot in Ball State's last three games before that goal right there to give Ball State the one nil lead. Uh, Ohio played a decent first half, Noah, but it was Ball State that got on the board and Ohio really didn't start attacking much till about the last 10 minutes. No, you're absolutely right, Gabe. It's been kind of a script flipped on how Ohio has been playing the last couple of games. We've seen a very organized back line from Ohio and a lot of energy from the front trying to take away the ball from the other back line, really pressuring up high. But that's what we've seen from Ball State, not Ohio, in this one. We've seen so much pressure from people like Mason and Elvbo and Lauren Roll up top for the Ball State Cardinals. And it sent the back line of Ohio, which is normally very organized and very effective, it sent them scrambling. So it's, a, it's been a tough one for Ohio and the way that they've normally played. But if they can get back to that and kind of give Ball State's game right back to them, then we could be seeing a much more interesting second half. Ohio kicks off to start the second half. Immediately, Studeville has it. Keeper for Ball State. Once again, Ohio has been outscored now 8-3 in first halves this season. They have outscored their opponents 7-6 in second halves. They'll need to at least outscore Ball State by one here in half number two to send this thing to overtime. Madeline Kay for Ohio. Plays Townsend. Townsend in a race with Studeville. She dribbled her. Incoming cross. Lecky couldn't get ahead on it. And Ball State clears. Wow, Sydney Lecky was all alone near the six. But in general, Gabe, really promising play for Ohio there. That's exactly the type of attacking chances that you'll want to see them create. Getting Studeville out of position would be a very good thing as Studeville has been quite effective this season, an 8.05 save percentage from her. And we've seen her out of position once in the first half, now once very quickly here in the second. Kay plays Molesky, Molesky chips and she was oh, offside. Sorry, she missed just wide, but she was just a tad offside. A little over a minute into the second half, Ohio's had a couple chances. I think it might have been by a toenail or a fingernail or a shoelace or something because that was so close to that back line. Studeville will dribble it out there and kick it away. <laughs> Mason's goal, by the way, was the first goal for Ball State in nearly two weeks after being shut out at Kent State and against Bowling Green. They beat Toledo two to nothing to begin conference play. Craig Roberts' group trying to hang on for a victory here in Athens. Ohio has not beat Ball State the last three seasons. Ohio leads the all-time series 11-6 and three. 11 wins, six losses, three ties. Ball sent in the 18, Ohio able to clear. But it's been all Ball State lately. Cardinals getting three straight victories. Yeah, 3-1 win last year in Muncie where Julia Elvbo had two goals for the Ball State Cardinals, including Ball the State game winner. Happen. Meanwhile, in 2016, another 3-1 win for Ball State, that one happening here at Chessa. And then in 2015, Ball State won it 2-1. to one. But before that, Ohio had an 11-3 lead in the series, and they won the 2014 game 1-0. But Ball State has set themselves up to take four straight against the Bobcats this season. Forty-eighth minute of this game. Studeville with the right-footed punt. Arnzen chases it down, plays back to Burkett. 
Now Leckie gets a touch. That ball stayed in on the far side and then knocked off of Rihanna Reese. So it'll be a Ball, a ball State throw. No, excuse me, Sydney Leckie. It'll be a Ball State throw. Ball State controlling. Left footed shot save by Burkett. It was elbow. With the shot on goal, that's her fifth shot on goal this season. Elbow on the shot. Burkett makes the save. Santa Catarina chests it down. And real quick, while we're just a few minutes in, what are your keys to this second half, my friend? Well, like I mentioned right when we started the half, I feel like Ohio needs to keep pressuring that defensive line like they're doing to open this half and then make sure that they get organization within their own back line. That was the main thing that troubled them in that first half was being somewhat disorganized. But so far in this one, they've done both of those things throughout the first five or so minutes of this half. We'll see if they can keep it up for the next 40 and Maybe get the breakthrough. Five minutes into the half, 40 to play. Ball State one, Ohio nil. Kay gets ahead on it. Ball State's Paula Guerrero wins it right back. Rocky with a nice step. Tries to play Townsend, nothing doing. Now Ball State on a counter. Lauren Roll sprints down the middle. And no call as she got taken down and now's the call. Late whistle, Ball State with the free kick. One about 30 yards out for the Cardinals. Guerrero and Abby right next to the ball for Ball State. Peyton Cook joining them, maybe for moral support. I'm not sure. It'll be Abby who sends to Cook. Cook, right foot, incoming cross. Nothing doing. Arns in able to clear. Now Townsend really boots it away. It's a really slick free kick play by Ball State. Have Peyton Cook, the runner run past the ball. And then the Bobcats kind of stop paying attention to her. But she's the one that gets the ball right back from Abby. Really had the chance to catch Ohio off guard and put Ball State up by two. But the back line set itself and dealt with the pressure. Lauren Roll tries to get a cross in. Nothing doing. It'll be a goal kick for Ohio. Line, 38 Ohio. minutes to play. Ohio still down 1 0. Ohio just one shot on goal in this match thus far. Ball State with three. Possession's about even, but you've talked about it. It's a matter of where that possession comes. And Ball State's been in the attacking third more than Ohio. Cardinal with traction. Now the Bobcats win a free kick far side just across midfield. Mandy Arnzen will take it, the senior defender. Started all 11 games now for Ohio. That ball in the middle of the 18, and Studeville catches it on the fly. 
another threat for the Bobcats taken away. Studeville knows when to come forward. She's got good goalkeeping instincts present so far today. There's been a couple times when she's been caught out of position though. Unfortunately, the Cats haven't been able to capitalize on those couple times, but that was not one of them. She was perfectly positioned to catch that ball and get rid of any threat that the Bobcats were preparing. And when you've got a senior keeper back there, Craig Roberts has got to feel very comfortable. Her decision making's been good today. Townsend had the one where she was able to beat her and dribble around her, but the cross just too high for Leckie. Just eight goals allowed in nine games for Studeville before this afternoon. Cross in and way behind the net. Townsend was near the 6-4 Ohio. It'll be a goal kick for the Cardinals. Yeah, Townsend was in a lot of space in the middle of the penalty area. And if that cross from Molesky had found Townsend, I don't think there's much Studeville could have done to keep the ball out of the back of the net. Kirk Unfortunately, though, Molesky's ball is just too Breaking far baseball. behind the goal. And Ohio unable to capitalize again. Still have 35 minutes to maybe find that breakthrough. Studeville boots it with her right foot. Santa Catarina gets ahead on it first. Abby comes away with it for Ball State. Now Lecky for Ohio. And Lecky pokes it off the foot of a Cardinal defender. Ohio throw. Ball State one and two in the MAC. They have not had a losing record overall since 2010. They haven't had a losing record in the MAC since 2011, the first two seasons under Craig Roberts. It's been six straight winning years for Roberts and Ball State. Currently one and two in the Mid-American Conference, seventh place in the MAC. Ohio two and one in conference play. And now that one sent in the 18 and a foul called on Ball State. Burkett as Burkett came out to punch it and missed. But Ball State gets called for the infraction in the 18. Yeah, Burkett really lucky there that the infraction was called. That ball was just sitting in the 18-yard box, begging to be tapped in after Burkett missed her punch. And now ball another State Ball infraction. State infraction. Ohio just able to move forward on the pitch thanks to some fouls by the Cardinals. Getting lucky a couple times, especially with that foul called on Burkett. Looked like about even contact from the Ohio player and the Ball State player that were in the area. But the call went Ohio's way. Molesky gets ahead on it quickly. Cleared out by Ball State. Now Reese with a step wins it back. Townsend dribbles around a couple. Finds Kalika, now Kalika gets it taken away. Braden clears out of bounds, Ball State throw, 33 minutes to play, Cardinals still lead 1-0. Fair substitution for Ball State. Jenna Dombrowski back into the game. Along with Tatiana Mason. Placing Lauren Roll and Allison Abbey. No one there in the throw for Ball State, but Arns in a bad touch, out of bounds. Cardinal throw once again, moving into the attacking third. Maria Kalika, back to Breeden. Ball just kind of pinballing around near the far side, and now the foul called on Maria Colica. Paula Guerrero got knocked down and a yellow card has been issued. 
to Maria Kalika. Crowd doesn't like it here at Chesafield. Paula Guerrero wasn't a fan of the tackle either. Ball State free kick. Only the fourth yellow card issued to an Ohio Bobcat this season. Ohio's played a lot of clean matches. No red cards for either side in any of their previous games. Guerrero sends it in. Middle of the 18, headed out by Arnzen. Now Lecky boots that one away. Ball State still controls. Left-footed shot from Cook. Deflected and they're going to say handball on Maria Kalika. Right off her right arm. And Ball State with a free kick about four or five yards outside the 18. Kalika had slid in there trying to make a sliding challenge and her arm kind of flew above her head when she made the slide. I think she'd argue that it was in a natural position. It obviously wasn't intentional, Correct. but it was outside that range of a natural position for the arm to be in. Called for the handball and this is looking dangerous. Shot deflected, still inside the 18. And Morgan Rocky tries to dribble it out, can't do it. Kerrigan Johnson with it in the corner for Ball State. Now Molesky clears. They'll go all the way back to Studeville. Big leg. Big kick from Studeville, headed back. We'll go end to end. Burkett with the ball now for Ohio. 30 minutes, 25 seconds to play. Ball State one, Ohio nil. That one goes off of a Ball State Cardinal, Julia Elbow. Ohio throw. Braden plays long, looks for Lecky, and now Ball State clears. Sydney Lecky will throw. Ohio has gotten into some pretty dangerous positions in this second half, and now it looks like they might be able to attack here again down that right wing. They've got some very talented offensive players on this side of the pitch, and their offenses seem to flow through this far side. Ball pinballs out of bounds. Ohio throw once again. Townsend touches around one. Now a left-footed shot from Abby Townsend. Deflected. Studeville can't hang on it. Molesky taps it in. And she was offside on the shot from Townsend. Head referee will Go talk. Studeville lost that ball. And we'll see what the call is. Offside. Wow. A goal taken away from the Bobcats. Ball State still leads 1-0. 29 minutes to play. K wins it in the air for Ohio. What'd you think, my friend? I couldn't believe it, Gabe. I really think that it was a goal. I, I think Molesky was onside in the first place. She, it looked like she was behind both the defender and the goalie when that ball was played. She worked herself into a good position, and after it hit off the goalie, well, after the ball is played from Townsend, it didn't matter where Molesky decides to be after that. And from my view, it looked like she was in a fair position. And the fact that the ball hit off the goalkeeper, Sudeville, should mean that the offside is Light negated there. in the first place, if I recall the rules correctly. And that's what the fans here at Chessa Field were clamoring about. Whether or not she was in an onside, onside or offside position during that Townsend shot, was it a live ball? after it hits off the goalie, Studeville. And according to the head referee and the line judge, that's not the case. But 
without having replay and knowing exactly where she was. I'm tempted to say she was in an onside position from the start. I suppose the line judge had a better view of it than I did, but I don't know, Gabe. Now substitutions for Ohio. Wow. That was just Ohio's second shot on goal. It came from Townsend. Santa Catarina will check out of this game. Olivia Sensky replaces her. Ball safe substitution. Sam Campbell back on the pitch. And Sam Campbell comes back in for, for Peyton, Peyton Cook. Cook. For the Bobcats, Olivia Sensky returns. For Denny Santa Catarina. 27 minutes to play. Ohio still down 1-0. No one there on the throw for Ball State. Rocky plays Reese. Reese finds Townsend. All still bouncing around. Maria Kalika finally clears and now a whistle. It'll be an Ohio free kick. I don't know if there was an infraction or a handball. Yeah, I couldn't tell. But I think Ohio is definitely more successful at pushing forward in this second half. We've seen strong chances from them. A couple tough breaks in a couple different ways. But ultimately, they're continuing to poke past that back line of Ball State. And I think we may see a breakthrough here pretty soon. Kalika tries to find Molesky. Molesky got a foot on it, but straight to Studeville. Nice work by Madeline Kay as well to get out of the scrum. A lot of credit to Taylor Pooley there. Makes another key defensive stop on that one too. But she was the main person in the area during that first crucial challenge. And they're gonna give a yellow card to Madeline Kay as she collides with a Cardinal. A lot of Chesapeake fans here up in arms about that one too. No doubt that it was a very physical collision, but it seemed to be a 50-50 ball that they both slid in for. There certainly wasn't malicious intent from not, Maddie Kay. Not at all. I thought they actually both hit the ball. Right. It's Taylor Pooley down on the ground for Ball State. 25 and a half minutes to play second half. Ball State leads Ohio. One nothing. I'm surprised to see the cards come out like they have in this one, Gabe. I mentioned it earlier in the previous 11, or excuse me, the previous 10 games that Ohio has played, just three yellow cards. In this game, two already. And quite frankly, two questionable yellow cards. You like what you see from Ohio thus far in the opening 20 minutes of the second half? I do, Gabe. Their back line seems to be more organized, and, and even before that, they're not letting Ball State run all over them in their defending third. And meanwhile, up top, we've seen more promising chances from Ohio. We've seen more determination and just a lot of energy trying to get those chances, and the chances have come. There was one goal that was taken away from the Bobcats on a potentially questionable offside call. And then just a couple other chances for Ohio that they weren't able to capitalize on. If some other things went the Bobcats' way in this one, they could very well have a lead due to their second half play. But they just have to convert chances. That's what it comes down to. They're creating them now. They need to figure out how to convert them. Play resumes, Studeville will kick for Ball State. Again, 25, just over 25 minutes to play. Ball State with a one nil lead. Studeville plays one near the top of the 18. 
On deflected outside now, Kerrigan Johnson. Johnson gets it poked away by Breeden. Breeden gets knocked down, and there's the call. Ohio free kick. Still just two shots on goal this afternoon for Ohio. Just three for Ball State. Molesky flicks it on, no one there. Ball played near sideline. Rocky tries to play Reese and it trickles out of bounds. Reese clears. Molesky chases for Ohio. Shielded off by Emily Simmons, and now they'll play back to Studeville. And now an infraction called on Julia Elvo. She shoved Sensky in the back. Cardinal infraction. Mandy Arnzen will once again take the kick for Ohio. Ohio doesn't get a touch. It's headed out of there by elbow. And now Reese gets it back for Ohio. Townsend too far of a touch down the near sideline, out of bounds, Ball State throw. Ohio seems to be getting a little bit frantic at this point with their offensive chances. They're certainly trying, they're running a lot, but they are feeling a tinge of desperation at this point. They need to get one goal to send this game to overtime. They'd like to get two in this second half and just win the thing outright. Molesky flicked that one on, no one running for Ohio. Studeville picks it up. 22 minutes, 40 seconds to play. Second half, Ball State one, Ohio nil. Tatiana Mason chases for Ball State. Mandy Arnzen clears. Cardinal throw near the 18. Mason, the lone goal for Ball State back in the first half. Freshman with her fourth of the season. On a cross from Kennedy Metzger. Mason didn't even settle it down. One hop, one touch, poked it in the back of the net. And now Olivia Molesky called for a foul. It'll be a Ball State kick, and the crowd here at Chessa starting to get antsy themselves. Referee is very particular about the spot of the ball when it's placed for a free kick. He's not been happy all afternoon with where players think the free kick is, consistently telling them to move it further back on the field. And here he goes so far as to stop the clock before the kick is taken so that Ball State has the chance to move it back further. Corcoran for Ball State, touches outside, in swinging ball, Mason couldn't get a foot on it, far post. Step goes wide. It'll be a goal kick line. for Ohio. Goal kick Ohio. And I'll tell you what, Tatiana Mason was about a foot away from poking it in and making it 2 nothing. The thing about Mason's goals this season, all of them have been game winners against Omaha, against Charleston, and against Purdue-Fort Worth. She had the game-winning goal in all three of those affairs, and she set herself up for the game winner here if Ohio can't come back. Mason gets goals in high-pressure situations, 
And it looked like she was about to have another one, very similar to her first goal here, where she just tapped it in without any control previously. But instead, she was, like you said, Gabe, about a foot shy. Molesky chases for Ohio, and she is pushed down, and there's the call. Just outside the 18-yard box. Ball stayed in practice. Would have been quite the lucky break if that one were any closer to that line in the penalty area. Emily Simmons knocked her down from behind. It's a free kick for Ohio, right side of the 18. And you said it, that, that ball's not even a foot outside the 18. Ball on the ground near the six, clear. Ohio throw, Maria Kalika took the free kick for Ohio. Throw in, Sydney Leckie touches near the goal line. Now Kala gets her cross deflected. Towns in there for Ohio and uh, once again, we have a whistle, another infraction. Seems like it right on the edge of the penalty area once again. Infraction goal. These are dangerous positions for Ohio. And I'm wondering what they're going to do this time to try and capitalize. This is the perfect opportunity to get a good in-swinging ball. And if you can get a head or a foot connected to it. Townsend crosses and actually she shoots. Studeville there Townsend to gather it. Wasn't the best angle, but not a bad shot from Abby Townsend. It's the third shot on goal for Ohio, and they still trail 1-0. 18 and a half minutes to play in this game. Ball flicked on. Tatiana Mason gets a touch. Arn's in there along with Breeden, and Burkett can't get there. It'll be a Ball State corner with 18 minutes to play. Pair of substitutions for Ball State. Amanda Shaw in. Grace on soft returns. Air plays really el elbow. Amanda Shaw back done. in the game for Ball State. Into Shaw. Bryce Huber for Olivia Molesky. Playing in her eighth game this afternoon. We're over to the corner. In swinging ball near the six, knocked around, and Sydney Leckie comes away with it for Ohio. She finds Townsend. Leckie down the far side. Now Townsend. Townsend finds Huber. Huber, top of the 18, settles and gets knocked down. No call in the box. Reese there, her shot gets deflected out. It'll be an Ohio corner. Wow. Brianna Reese, the attempt. Taken over the touchline by Bryce the Huber can't believe it. The that one kick. was inside the 18. It would have been a penalty kick. Down. Instead, Ohio gets their third Abby corner Johnson of the game. The With just under 17 minutes to play, down 1 0. I think that would have been an opportunity to, for Huber to take a more decisive and early shot before the defense was able to catch up to her in the first place. Townsend's ball near post, punched out by Studeville. And now Ball State clears. There's Studeville once again, decisive, gets a hand on the ball. And Ohio's threat taken away for now. Still in a good position though, and depending on what they do with this throw, that can't do that though. Offside call. Kalika was offside, Ball State kick. Kalika had set up in that sort of position, trying to get the ball on the throw, and you can't call offside on a throw in. But then she just found herself in an offside position when it was eventually kicked to her. Unfortunate run of events. Studeville kind of shanked that one. That one never came in play. It'll be an Ohio throw at midfield. Just 
And then Dombrowski boots it forward for Ball State. That one goes off of the Cardinals now. Amanda Shaw couldn't keep control. Townsend gets a touch and now once again kicked out by Shaw. Huber chests it down, gets it taken away by Kennedy Metzger. Ball State controls, 15 minutes to play. Ohio still down 1-0. Sammy Corcoran with a nice touch around one, and then her ball gets headed out by Breeden for a Ball State throw. Ohio trying to improve to three and one in back play for the first time under Aaron Rodgers. Ball State one and two in the MAC, trying to snap their two game losing streak after beating Toledo to start conference play. Ball State has only lost three games in MAC play the last three years combined. They've already lost two here in 2018. You just look at the records, it was very deceiving coming to this one. Everybody knew Ball State was better than their one and two record. Leckie wins it away. Huber chests it down. Now an Ohio throw right in front of the Ball State bench. 13 and a half minutes to play. Ohio still down 1 0. Cardinals pushing forward. Amanda Shaw shot blocked by Arnzen. And now it's Kay near midfield for Ohio. Kay finds Townsend near side. Townsend's touch just too far. And Kennedy Metzger wins it away. Yeah, Kay did find Townsend streaking down that left side, but unfortunately the freshman had to stop her run as she was charging pretty far forward, but Maddie Kay didn't play that ball as forward as I think she was attempting to. So Townsend had to slow down, couldn't slip behind the back line, and that kind of slowed down the run of the Bobcats. Campbell loses it for Ball State. Cardinals with the ball back, and no one there on that cross attempts. Burkett picks it up, 12.20 to play. Ohio needs a goal to tie. And off the bounce, Emily Simmons gets the first touch and Ball State comes away with it. A lot of contact on that header from Simmons. She was battling up against Huber and Huber definitely fell off balance but never went to the ground. Sometimes see the strategy employed where you will go to ground to get a Garden foul called. Back. And while Huber was able to regain her balance and survive, there was no foul called even though there was pretty significant contact, I would say. Might have been a borderline foul and had Huber decided to go to ground, that might have swayed the referee's judgment a little bit. Huber's long shot attempt blocked. She now falls, and Sensky gets a touch for Ohio now. Tries to play Breeden. It trickles under her foot. Just over 11 minutes to play. Ball State, a couple substitutions. There are substitutions for Ball State. We haven't seen too many subs for Ohio in this second half yet. Elbow back in the game for Amanda Shaw. Some players sitting on the bench right again. now that could come in and make an impact. You think of Paige Knorr, who has two assists this year in her eight games. You think of Serena Dierig, who's scored two goals. Both sitting on the bench right now. Ball State keeps it in far side. 
Randy Arnzen now beats Peyton Cook to the ball and clears. Ball State throw. Just seems like the seconds are dwindling away. 10 minutes, 15 oh, seconds to play. Yeah. Ohio needs a goal to tie. Here places Tatiana Mason. In for the first time for the Bobcats. Taylor Dickerson. Now Rihanna Reese will Blake come off the Reese. field. Taylor Dickerson comes in the game for Ohio. Dickerson, the 5'5 freshman defender from Cincinnati, Ohio, has played in eight of the 10 games this year for the Bobcats. Ball State controlling. Arnzen pokes it away. Breeden boots it out. Now ball sent in the 18. Abby chases, gets a foot on it, and deflects it out for a corner. Heck of a play by Allison Abby. She didn't have the goal today, but two goals and an assist for Abby this season. Leads the team with 15 shots. She's been aggressive. It'll be a Ball State corner with 9-12 to play. Up 1-0. Yeah, Ball State definitely going to take their time here, although the clock has stopped. But they just want to concentrate on keeping the ball at this side of the pitch and leaving Ohio no chance to come back and score that one goal they need. Burkett punches it out. Metzger's shot is blocked, and it'll be an Ohio free kick. Ball State confused on what the call was. Cardinal attraction. I believe it was offside, actually. I think you're right there, Gabe, the side judge, lining things up. Making sure that Burkett had the ball in the right position. They are so strict about that today. Burkett had the ball about half a foot in front of the six, and they made her move it back. Ohio, of course, a little antsy. Down one, eight minutes and 20 seconds to play. We've seen Ohio antsy since about 15 minutes or so ago. Huber chests one forward and ball booted out by Zisweiler. Yela Zisweiler, the 5'6 junior defender, making her sixth start of the season this afternoon. Clears danger for now. Now Huber off the throw, finds Townsend. Townsend looks and now, I don't know if she went to pass or touch, but no one was there. And Ball State comes away with it. Abby down the far side, dribbles right off of Townsend for a Ball State throw, seven and a half minutes to play. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what Townsend was trying to do there, whether it was play a ball forward or if she just got it mishit, or maybe it touched a Ball State defender, although it didn't look like it did. But that was certainly a promising possession for Ohio. They had numbers forward. They looked to be in good position, and Townsend just couldn't find the pass. Ohio's going to need a dramatic finish here at Chesa today in order to just force overtime. As Serena Dierig. Checks in for Ohio. Seven minutes to play, Third down one nil. Serena Dierig returns for Abby Townsend. I'll go back in the pitch. Olivia Molesky for Bryce Huber. Dierig gets a touch. Flicks out, outside for Molesky. Ball cleared. Dickerson will take the throw. On the foot of Molesky, and Molesky is shielded off. It'll be a goal kick. Good defense on the far side by the Cardinals. I thought Molesky was just able to touch that one and get it off the Ball State defender, but that is not what happened. I think that's what Molesky was trying to do by getting behind the Ball State line. Just get a touch and... Dickerson plays Deerig. Now that ball just too far for Peyton Cook. Just
just under six minutes to play. Ball State boots it forward. Allison Abbey in the far corner. She'll take her time. And ball poked out off of Abbey. Ohio, Ohio throw, and the throw is almost intercepted by Cook. Kalika comes away with it. Boots it, and now Deerig on the end of it for Ohio. And it's headed out by Ball State. Ohio throw, 5.20 to play. Desperately needing a goal to tie. Dickerson plays K. She wasn't offside. K looks, takes a touch, finds Deerig, and she plays Lecky. Lecky pokes it in. Uh, Nobody offside this time, and Ohio knots this thing at one with 5.06 to play. Very good play from the Bobcats there making sure that they have their passing lanes open and just finding numbers, getting that Ball State defense, finding it at its most unorganized. And normally you don't see a defender as far back as Ziswiler was there, but she played Molesky onside in that first Correct. opportunity. And that enabled Deerig to be where she was. That enabled Lucky to be where she was. Just all around great passing, great recognition from the Bobcats to knot this thing at one and probably send it into overtime. Sydney Leckie's first goal of the season for Ohio. She leads the team in assists with three. And has had plenty of chances. Third on the team in shots with 19, but pokes that one in and tied at one. Now this shot sails way yeah, high. Goal kick coach. Ohio, 425 to play. Goal kick Ohio. And I think in the aftermath of everything, it was Studeville awarded with a yellow card. For not. arguing whether or not Leckie was offside. Must have been. Ket's ball. Sensky gets a touch. Molesky shields off. One now finds Deerig. Deerig back to Molesky on a one-two. And Molesky's tripped up. And they're gonna give her a card. Molesky's tripped from behind by Metzger. And Ohio with a free kick in a dangerous position. Three and a half to play, all tied at one. some sort of communication between the referee and that Ball State wall right now. Not entirely sure what that conversation was about. But now he will back up the wall. Maria Kalika will take this kick for Ohio. In swinging ball, back post, sails out. Goal kick, Ball State, 3.30 to play. Abby Townsend will check back in the game for Ohio. Replaces Madeline Kay. Abby Townsend returns for Maddie Kay. Goal kick just under the foot of Townsend. Dickerson got a touch, and now Ohio wins a free Ball kick State once again. Maria Kalika, very active in the last few minutes. Mandy Arnzen will take the kick for Ohio. Everybody forward for the Bobcats except for Arnzen and Breeden. Arnzen's ball, left side of the 18, flicked on by Deerig. Townsend's there, but Studeville comes oh, out and makes the play. Offside was called anyways. And Studeville will 
Boot this one away with two and a half to play. Studeville getting really testy with the official. She got the call, but then continued to make some remark. That's what got her the yellow card in the first place. Kalika sends one right off the back of Dickerson. And now gets it taken away, but Breeden there for Ohio. Out of bounds. Ball State throw. Two minutes to play. Two, Two minutes. minutes from overtime minutes. if this thing stays knotted at one. Cook sends a ball in. Rocky there to clear. Now Kalika ahead for Townsend, and Townsend gets bodied off the ball. No call, Ball State throw. Now Cook loses it. And are they going to say a throw or a, a foul? They're going to call a foul on Ohio. Cook draws the infraction. Ball State free kick, 118 to play. One minute remaining. Ball sent in, top of the 18, headed out for now. Cardinals still control, and now Arnzen boots it away. Well, I'll tell you what, if Arnzen would have sent that toward the middle of the field, Serena Dierig was running. Cleared out, Ohio throw, 42 seconds to play. And Ohio is going to sub. For Taylor Dickerson. I think Aaron Rodgers might be content to take this thing to overtime. Throw headed out. Ohio still controls, 20 seconds to play. Campbell flicks forward and now Arnzen touches outside. 10 seconds to play and that ball knocked out of bounds Eight, off of Ohio. Seven, six, ball state five, throw, quickly four, forward. Three, Campbell two, touches. One. Once again, gets a Zero. shot off and uh, wide. We've got And we're going to have overtime. Extra time here at Chesa Field. Ohio 1, Ball State 1. Sydney Lecky knocks the game at 1 uh, with under 10 minutes to play. We'll take a short break and bring overtime for you when we come back on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Extra time here at Chesa Field. Ohio one, Ball State one. Sydney Lecky knots this game at one for Ohio with about five minutes to play. After Ball State struck first in the first half, Tatiana Mason, the freshman with the goal. And Ball first State and Ohio head to overtime. Two 10 minute periods of extra time, but golden goal here in the NCAA. So first goal wins. If no goals, this game will end in a tie after 20 minutes. Ohio moves right to left here in the first extra time period. Ball State left to right. You know, Gabe, I've never understood the kickoff tactic that Ball State continues to use. Of just boot it? Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, if they were sprinting numbers forward and they took a little bit longer before their boot, then it kind of makes sense, you know, put some pressure on right away. But they just gave it a boot right to an Ohio defender, and that gives the other team control. That doesn't make sense to me out of a kickoff. I'm not entirely sure the strategy, the tactical brilliance behind that. But maybe there's something I'm missing, Gabriel. Simmons wins it away from Townsend, but Ohio gets it back. Lecky outside to the foot of Molesky. Molesky quickly to the freshman Townsend. Townsend touches to her right. Long shot. Misses wide right. Goal Townsend kick, Ball State. Goal kick, Ball State. If she had kept that one a little bit lower, I think that would have been a definite chance for Molesky to head that one home. It looked better as a cross than it did as a shot, although it did have some late curling action, but it was well wide of the goal. I would, I think a goal's length wide. But it wasn't low enough to connect with Molesky. Kay gets ahead on it. Now plays back Breeden. Kotlicka to Townsend, now Molesky, far side. Cross near the top of the 18, no one there for Ohio. Olivia Sensky was pushing forward. Tatiana Mason boots it out of bounds. Ohio throw. I'm surprised to see Ball State playing a lot more defensively than we saw them normally. They just have one player really far forward. That's Allison Abbey. A couple in attacking midfield, but really three strict defensive midfielders and then three or four defenders is their main formation. They are definitely stacking the back trying to not concede rather than trying to score. A pass intended for Abby. Arn's in there for Ohio. And it'll be a Ball State kick to the Ohio infraction. Just under, th just about three minutes into this extra time period. Ball State in Ohio, deadlocked at one. Kick in the middle of the 18, finally booted away. Ball State still controls. And now long shot, one hopper to Burkett. Burkett quickly throws to Leckie near side. Johnson, the attempt. Leckie intended for Townsend. Townsend couldn't get there, Simmons wins it. And now it's Corcoran in the middle for Ball State. Corcoran plays long. Braden there, but straight to Abby. Abby touches to her left, and Braden knocks it away. Trickles out of bounds for a Ball State throw. Out swinging cross, top of the 18. Left footed shot. Saved by Burkett, might have been going a little wide. Shot by Elbow. Still tied at one, 5.50 to play. First extra time period. By Burkett. You're seeing that same sort of franticness from both sides here in this overtime period. Ohio played kind of a frantic offensive style at the end of that second half. 
But once they calmed down a little bit and settled in, they were able to play their game, find their passes, and that ended up resulting in a goal for the Cats. This kick will go Both Ohio's way. So you have to wonder if either team is going to decide to settle down and build up this offense rather than just kind of frantically pushing the ball forward like they both have been through the first five minutes of overtime. Sensky takes the kick for Ohio. Good kick flicked on. Lecky there for the Bobcats. Still battling and uh, off of Sidney Lecky for a goal kick. Lecky and Townsend both arguing that that went off oh, the Ball State kick. defender. But it'll be a goal kick, four and a half to play, first extra time period. Lecky off the goal kick. Near side to Reese. Reese long ball for Townsend. Townsend couldn't get there, but it's out of bounds off of Emily Simmons. Ohio corner, their fourth of the day. Goal wins the game. Less than four minutes to play, first extra time period. Townsend to take it. And swinging ball near post. Kalika chests it down and it's booted away by Abby. Breeden there for Ohio. Puts it back in. Ball State trying to clear and finally do. Rocky chases for Ohio. Good back heel. Now Rihanna Reese. Reese to Rocky. Rocky looking for Townsend is deflected. Lecky keeps it in. Now plays middle. Too long for Maleski and K couldn't get there. Quick throw, Guerrero for Ball State controls. Less than three minutes to play, first extra time period. And Breeden wins it away from Mason. Yeah, sliding clearance that went over the fence and onto Schaefer Street. A lot of power behind her clearance there. Guerrero plays outside. Cross in the middle and Burkett dropped it. Finally able to get a hold of it. A little shaky from the senior keeper. Yeah, she's lucky there wasn't any Ball State players in the area that could have tapped that in after it hit off her gloves. Maleski couldn't get there. Ball knocked out of bounds off of Ball State. Bobcat throw. Maleski battling with Simmons. Won it. Now Townsend for Ohio. Tries to split defenders. Couldn't quite get there. And now Leckie wins it back for Ohio, but Townsend called for the foul. Ball State kick, 140 to go. First extra time period, still knotted at one. Dudeville boots it down the near side. Off of Ball State, Julia Elbow and Ball Guerrero both there. And now Maria Kalka gets knocked down from behind. And it'll be a yellow card issued to Kennedy Metzger. And there's the red. Metzger sent off. Ball State will play with 10 men in the final minute of second this first yellow. extra time period. That was Metzger's second yellow. Kennedy Metzger. Clock stop, 57 seconds to play. A 
There was a lot of chatter from the fans asking for that yellow card, and eventually it came. Might have been a little harsh to be a second yellow. It was definitely a lot of contact, hard contact. Senske boots, ball one in the air by Ball State, out to Breeden of Ohio. Breeden touches, flicks outside for Townsend. Townsend dancing with it. Now out swinging cross. K gets a touch to her left foot, now her right, and just couldn't get a shot off. 30 seconds to play, first extra time period. Senske, long one hopping shot. Saved by Studeville. Olivia Senske with the shot. That might do it for the first 10 minutes here in extra time. 15 seconds to go. Reese gets a touch, and now Elbow gets Eight, knocked down. Seven, six. Clock stopped with five seconds to play first extra time period. Ball State's going to get one more shot. Yeah, they're going to bring Studeville up to take this one and see if they can just get some luck. They certainly don't want to play another 10 minutes with only 10 women. Four. Three, Here we two, go. Two seconds, one second, ball headed out. Zero. And there's the first extra time, time period. We'll take a quick break here on Ohio Bobcat TV and be right back. Ball State in Ohio deadlocked at one. We'll be back for the final 10 minutes. Highland Ball State both take the field once again. Final 10 minutes from Chesa Field. Ohio won, Ball State won. Double overtime. A goal wins it for either team. Ohio trying to improve to three and one in the MAC for the first time under head coach Aaron Rodgers. Ball State trying to avoid a one and three start. The Cardinals have lost three games total in conference play over the last three seasons. With an Ohio goal, they'll fall to one and three. Craig Roberts hasn't had a losing season in the MAC since 2011. This team trying to avoid a dreadful start. Breeden touches around one, but gets tripped up. Wins the Ohio kick. Let's go, 
Ball State already playing with 10 on the field after Kennedy Metzger was shown a second yellow card toward the end of the double overtime, or the first overtime period, I should say. And you'd think they'd want to be a little bit more careful in terms of committing fouls. Want to keep all 10 on the pitch at this point. Tatiana Mason plays a ball in. Kicked away. Serena Deary gets a chest on it near midfield. East plays far side. Abby Townsend gets it taken away. Ohio gets it back. Santa Catarina in the game here for the second extra time period. She gets a touch, now plays middle. It's deflected and not quite out. Olivia Molesky gets there for Ohio. Molesky takes middle. Looks for Townsend and nothing there. Arnzen switches the field now. Rocky with the ball for Ohio. 8.20 to play. And Rihanna Reese lost it out of bounds. No, it got deflected. Ohio throw. And oh, the side ref, the far side judge said Ohio throw. Head referee said nope, ball state throw. Arnzen plays back. Burkett gets it away. Ball State on the attack. Reese dribbles outside, finds Kalika. Kalika trying to turn, and now she takes down a Cardinal on the far side. Ball State free kick in a dangerous spot. 7.20 to play. Still tied at one. Guerrero will take it for Ball State. Here we go. Ball played on the ground, past everybody, but Deary gets a touch for Ohio. Ball State still on the attack. Now Molesky wins it. Molesky outside Deary. Deary right back to Molesky. And Molesky just couldn't get a touch, just too far. For the junior from Plain City, Ohio. Cleared out, Bobcat throw, six and a half to play. And as Shaw chases after that one for Ball State, couldn't get there, Ohio throw. Ohio lost in double overtime to Central Michigan to begin the conference season, one nothing. Now trying to win it in double overtime. Townsend plays the ball in, in the six. Studeville there. Olivia Molesky was back post for Ohio. She was the only one in the vicinity. Studeville's punt goes directly out of bounds, far side. It's the second or third time that she's done that, trying to give Ball State an advantage by kicking it deep, but ending up giving the ball right back to Ohio. Obviously, the Cats still have plenty of room that they have to traverse on the field to get to where they need to go to score. But at the same time, can't score without the ball. Quick throw from Ball State, Arnzen clears. Five minutes to play. Ohio and Ball State deadlocked at one. Ball chipped up. 
Flicked on by Ball State Shaw, still in the 18. Left footed shot deflected. Victoria Breeden chases it down for Ohio. And Breeden looks for Molesky. Molesky drops Sensky. Sensky quickly switches field. Townsend plays Reese. And now Reese tripped up, and there's the kick. I think he was waiting to see if we were going to get an advantage. Ohio free kick near midfield, 4-10 to play. A goal for either team wins it. Golden goal here in extra time. Arnzen sends it in. Headed out by Ball State. Kalika there. Now Townsend gets a touch. Touches to her left, shot high, shot just wide. We have Ball State goal kick with 3.48 to play. Fair substitutions for the Cardinals. Fistrovich returns. Ball State a couple of subs. Fistrovich back in the game. Peyton Cook back on the pitch. Peyton Cook He's returns as well. Arns in, a long, high boot. Deary trying to play it for Ohio. She wins it, turns, right-footed shot. She never got a good, clean foot on it. Kind of hit off her shin before it hit her right boot. Deary just trying to find the teeniest amount of space to score that one. She, was, she did well to control it in the first place. Ball flicked on for Deary. Studeville waiting, and... Uh, now they're gonna give a free kick to Ohio, but Deary got a shot there. Yeah, I was surprised to see them not play advantage. I think they, the concern was player safety as Santa Catarina fell to the ground and was there for a little while. And Aaron oh, Rodgers, I'm gonna guess he wanted an, adva an advantage too. Talking to the far side referee. And if we're being frank about this, I think Studeville would have had that ball before Deerig did. But it's worth letting that play out and then calling it back. Arnzen plays one in, one hop straight to Studeville. 2.45 to play. Mandy Arnzen sending Second it. overtime period. Studeville making a stop. Still not at it one. I think we're inching closer and closer to the inevitable draw in this one, Gabe. Neither team has really looked like they've had a great chance to score in this double overtime period. Ball played in, Breeden barely got a foot on it, now clears. Ball sent back in, Santa Catarina heads it down. Deary flicks it to herself, looks for Molesky down the near sideline. Townsend's in the 18. Molesky waits. Now sends one in. It's headed out. Deary there. Gets a foot. Now plays Sensky. Back to Molesky. 145 to play. Molesky out swinging ball near the 18. Townsend chested down. Plays back for Santa Catarina. Ball played in. Sensky there. Gets a touch and now cleared out for a corner. Ball defended over the touch line. Corner Ohio with their the fifth cast. corner kick this afternoon. 120 to play, second overtime period. To the angle for the corner. Abby Townsend. Townsend will take it. In swinging ball and on top of the net. On top of the net. We're under Goal one kick minute, ball state, 55 remaining. seconds to play. Goal kick one in the air by Molesky. Deerig on the end of it for Ohio. Townsend running, Deerig's ball headed out. No offside, it'll be an Ohio corner, 30 seconds to play. Deary wow. had the option, shot her across there. Wow, what a chance. 
I think Dierig made the right call. I think she was a little bit too far wide of goal to be able to swing that one in. Here's the corner, 20 seconds to play. Studeville punches it out. Breeden there for Ohio, quickly plays Dierig. Dierig back to Breeden, 10 seconds. Ball Nine, in the middle of the 18, eight, headed out. Seven, now six, clear, six seconds. Four, and now three, Ball State comes two, away with it. It'll one. trickle out of bounds and that'll do it. A, a hard one. fought tie, 1-1 one, one, one between Ball time. State and Ohio. Each team gets a point. Ohio now seven points, 2-1-1 one, one in the MAC. Ball State 1-2-1 one, one in the MAC. They have four points through the first few games here in Mid-American Conference play. Your general thoughts from this one, my friend. I think this is a game that both teams will walk away from saying, boy, we could have done it. I think Ball State had the better chances in the first half, and there were a couple times when I feel like they should have scored. They should have lengthened their advantage. And then from the second half on, it felt like it was Ohio's game. And you could just feel that that breakthrough was coming of, with five minutes left to play in the second half of Ohio eventually drew, drew the game. And then in that first overtime period, it was kind of back and forth, but it looked like Ohio had the advantage, especially once they were uh, 11 to 10 when Ball State had the player sent off. And then in that second overtime period, a couple of very good chances for the Bobcats with some late defending from Ball State comes through and earns them the draw. But like I said, if Ball State was able to convert more in the first half, they feel like they should have won this game. And if Ohio was able to do it from the second half on, the Bobcats could have won this game. Ball State will be at Northern Illinois Thursday. Ohio back home against Akron Thursday. We'll have the call for you right here on Ohio Bobcat TV. That's a four o'clock kickoff against the Akron Zips. Akron came into today one and two in the MAC, three points in 10th place in the Mid-American Conference. Thanks for tuning in today, for Jason Chapino running our camera, for Noah Wolf. So long from Athens.